Eric Ritchie alongside Gordy Rush, of course, of the LSU Sports Radio Network and with us on CST. We're going to talk more about your show again back for year two in a minute. But what has been your impression, kind of your takeaway from the first two weeks of camp, Gordy? Well, I'll tell you what, it's been very physical. I've been impressed with uh, what LSU's done. Both quarterbacks look better, and that's something that you, you certainly would expect. Brandon Harris is, uh, you know, uh, taking more of the reps with the ones, but I think this quarterback duel is far from uh, being over. And, and from that standpoint, I've been impressed with. I've also been impressed with what Kevin Steele's done. Uh, he's done a nice job of coming in here and putting his twist to this defense. You're starting to see some young guys blend with some of the older guys. This is going to be a physical attacking defense that's going to get after you, and I like some of the things that he'll do differently differently than John Chavis did. I know the point of emphasis has been get to the quarterback oh, yeah. in camp. And some of those young guys that you've talked about, the Arden Keys, the Isaiah Washingtons, we've heard so much about what have you seen from these young defensive ends that might actually get more pressure this year in the quarterback? Yeah, no question. Uh, you got two guys that uh, I think their forte in Washington and Key is getting up the field. The challenge is going to get them to be able to play the run as strong as they do the pass. What I also like is that uh, the arrival of these guys uh, on campus has really pushed the likes of Tayshawn Bauer, Lewis Neal, uh, Tahuma, and all these guys that have been here for a year or two. DeAndre Clark's another guy that really showed some, uh, you know, some splashes and flashes, if you will, of getting up the field. So what I like is the young guys have pushed the older guys and now on a defensive front seven that you were really worried about, uh, you know, the depth there, they're starting to show that uh, they, they've got 9, 10, 11 guys that are going to be able to play. When we talk about the running backs and you have a Heisman yeah. candidate in the backfield, so much of our attention is going to be towards number seven. But every time I talk to an <laughs> offensive player, they're talking about Darrell Williams and these two freshmen, Geis and Brosette. What can you tell us about the other three well, running backs? Well, the hot guy has <laughs> been Geis. Everybody's talking about Geis. And some of the reason is is that Les Miles, Frank Wilson, they know what Fournette can do. And that you know that Williams is a banger. But Geis has shown a, a lot of make you miss and a lot of explosiveness. That being said, you got Nick Brosette, who, who is running the football well between the tackles. And then Leonard Fournette. You know, not a lot of people talked about Leonard's brother. And I love the change of pace that he brings, gets to the corner well, very effective on third down. We talk so much about the maturity at quarterback mm -hmm. and the difference between a freshman and a sophomore, Brandon Harris. All of those wide receivers that were true freshmen last year now are second-year players. Have any of those guys stepped up and, and really caught your eye as far as the maturity level for the receivers as well? I think the big, uh, you know, the big topic has been DJ Chark, and that goes back to spring football. Here's a guy that they used in spots last year and uh, all of a sudden is really found his niche and is playing very comfortable. Uh, that being said, I think one of the big storylines that has gone overlooked a little bit is the arrival of Tony Ball, a veteran a wide receiver coach from the University of Georgia that has come in and gone back to basics starting in, in April with spring ball and taught these guys to get off of jams. That was one of the problems to go along with the, the you know, erratic play at quarterback. These wide receivers struggled to get off jams, were knocked off their routes, obviously had some drops. Tony Ball's done a great job of going back, speed release, basic releases, teaching them to get away from the jam, get back on their routes. They're running crisper routes. Uh, I think the move of Malachi Dupree to slot becomes a, a big thing, especially if I'm a defensive coordinator. What I'm, I'm looking at is if I've got Traven Durrell on one side and I've got uh, Malachi Dupree in the slot on the other side, I'm going to think twice about bringing my strong safety into the tackle box. And the big thing about that, if you, you remember, LSU wants to run the football. And last year, opponents always had the strong safety in the tackle box. And LSU was trying to run in the eight-man fronts a lot. And I think putting Dupree in three wides there and Durrell on the other side, I've got to be double high because Doral's going to go and all of a sudden Dupree to the corner makes it tough for any one defensive back to, to handle. So I've really been impressed with the receivers. Gordy, you were a huge part of last year's new show, LSU Game Day Live. It's in the morning of all those home games and what you guys did year one to kind of set it up now. You want this to be a tradition sure. on Cox Sports Television. If LSU is playing a football game, you guys got you covered in the morning. You know, we sure do. Beacon Award winning, by the way. <laughs> LSU Game Day Live. and We have a great group that's involved with it. Here's a fun thing. Kevin Mawai and, and Jacob Hester, along with Victor Howell, Emily Dixon, we have a great job just talking football. And, you know, I've, I've done 
done a lot of shows over the year. This one is so easy and more fun from the standpoint. It's what we're used to talking about. And then when you get three former football players talking about game film, it's second nature. So it's must watch. It's 11 o'clock each and every Saturday. We'll be wherever the Tigers are, even if it's up in Arkansas and it's 10 degrees with wind chill <laughs> feeling. You know, I felt like I was at Lambeau and I was only in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, we, we're, we're blessed to be a part of the CST family. Gordy, we're looking forward to not only that show, but to having you back yeah. here in this Tiger training camp show. It's a first year for this show. We've had a blast on it. It's been a challenge, but we come through with 15 minutes a night. So thanks for being a part of it. Thanks tonight. for having me. Appreciate it.